Atlanta's mayoral candidates are making their final push ahead of tomorrow's runoff election. Thousands of voters are expected to turn out to choose the city's next mayor. The race is between City Council President Felicia Moore and at-large councilman Andre Dickens. The latest Atlanta Journal poll shows Dickens leading more, nearly 43 to 37%, with 20% of voters still undecided. A different poll from Survey USA shows more leading Dickens, 46 to 40%, with 14% undecided. Joining me now is Atlanta mayoral candidate Felicia Moore. I should also note that we extended an invitation to Andre Dickens, and we're hoping to also have him on the show tonight. Uh, so, uh, Ms. Moore, I just want to first jump into the, the results of the first runoff. You were clear, the, the clear leader in that uh, first race, but now, you know, there seems to be some momentum under Dickens, and now these polls put either him slightly ahead or you slightly ahead. How do you break out of that and, and demonstrate to the residents of Atlanta that you are a clear choice to be mayor, the next mayor of the city of Atlanta? Well, first, Charles, thank you so much for having me. I'm an admirer of yours, and I was honored to get the uh, the invitation. Let me start with, you know, we had 41% of the vote out of 16 candidates. And every poll since June has always had me in the top two. Polls are great things, but they're not the poll. And that's what matters when people go to the polls. And I believe I will end victorious as a decisive winner in this race. The Atlanta Journal-Constitution uh, poll it had some very interesting breakdowns of who was supporting whom. Uh, as they put it, Dickens led among women, Democrats, and black voters, while Moore was ahead with white voters, Republicans, and people aged 18 to 29. What do you make of those polling results? Well, I found it interesting. Typically, I did better in an older demographic, uh, but I do think that it's misleading. Yes, I did do very well in the Buckhead part of our district, which is white and mostly Republican in that area. But that's because I built uh, relationships with them over many years. I represented a portion of that area and have developed relationships with leaders in neighborhoods across that part of town. But I also showed up and did very well, really almost sweeping East Atlanta, which is both white and black, liberal, and very Democrat, as well as in Southwest Atlanta, which is really the bedrock of the black vote here. The, my opponent and I did actually the same. Uh, the rest of the votes were by other candidates that were in the race. And so, you know, he didn't do any better in the black community in, in, in the actual poll when they went to the, in the general election. So I've been reaching out to voters and trying to expand the base. I think it's probably very good that you have a black candidate that is actually uh, supported by people that traditionally we've had a white candidate and a black candidate and it's been sort of the white side votes for the white person, the black side votes for the black person, and if you get a few more votes in between, you become mayor. Uh, we need to unify our city because portion of our city and that area in particular is talking about leaving the city of Atlanta. Uh, I, absolutely, and that's a, big, that's a big concern for the next mayor of the city. Uh, however, you know, in a tight race like what we appear to have going into tomorrow, we, we have an enormous pool of undecided voters. One poll has it at 20 percent, which is just unheard of. Other, other poll has it at 14 percent. Uh, I looked at the internals on one of those polls, there were twice as many black people undecided as other people who are undecided. So you, the, 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 the last pitch has to be to those black voters because those black voters are gonna determine who's gonna be the next mayor of Atlanta. Love what is it. your pitch to those under, 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 undecided black voters? Well, my pitch to them is the same pitch I make anywhere in this city. We have a big threat to our brand here in Atlanta with the violent crime that's taking place. And my five C's plan, as I call it, that's on my website, talks about how we holistically uh, tackle that. Our city service delivery is abysmal in this city and how I'm going to work to fix that. 
and then being transparent in our government, letting people know how their money's being spent, being ethical, getting this cloud of corruption, which is a stain on our brand, out from over City Hall, and being accountable to the people. That's my same message everywhere. And so since we entered the runoff, we've been on the street, boots on the ground, knocking on doors, particularly in those areas in Southwest Atlanta where there are many votes that are undecided to get them on team more. There, there have been some really uh, interesting, I would say curious, some other people might say, uh, maneuvering in the last days of this race. Uh, the Dickens campaign uh, claims a super PAC that supports you darkened his face to make him appear to be a darker skinned black man as a somehow it's negative uh, so a negative for him uh, i think he put that out as a as a, a campaign fundraiser or something or an ad of some sort what do you how do you respond to that did that happen no so what I, in a debate he brought it up and as a black woman i would have stood up and said, and denounced it uh, and I asked him to show me what he was talking about because I, I saw the picture. I didn't think anything about it being darkened. Well, when he finally did a fundraising ad and he put the picture that was in the ad and then a picture that he purported to be the original photo that was darkened, anybody with two eyes them know it was two different pictures. And so there was never any darkening of his skin at all. And I found it uh, abhorrent that he would even try to trick people into thinking somehow some PAC that was supportive of my campaign, which I had no coordination with at all, I did that. And it just mm -hmm. became a ridiculous conversation about colorism uh, that we shouldn't be having in this race. And unfortunately, they've gone down this track because typically in the last two races, it's been a white candidate and black candidates and black candidate people have wanted to keep black leadership in this city. Now you have two black candidates and they're using the same old playbook that they would use with a white candidate. And somehow now I've turned white. <laughs> you know, it, it's ridiculous. I, I've never thought in my life that I'd have to defend my blackness with the experiences that I've had and the people that I've served in this city. One last question, because it's just getting a lot of traction on on social media tonight, right ahead, right before the election. And because these elections come down to just a few votes, and you know, the last couple have come down to just a few votes. Uh, you know, these this thing has tens of thousands of views online. So the rapper T.I. is now saying that you want to close uh, clubs, uh, uh, close down strip clubs. Or, uh, you know, his social media post basically says, if you are a club owner, a bartender, a dancer, a promoter, a valet driver, or just a visitor who subscribes to the culture of the city, understand that our livelihoods and our way of life is, be is under threat. They're accusing you of wanting to close down these establishments by making them apply for a special use permission, which they say you would then deny, and therefore nightlife in the city of Atlanta would be destroyed. How do you respond to that? Well, first of all, it's a lie. I, I haven't even mentioned strip clubs in this whole race since I've been in it when I challenged the current mayor back in January. Today was the only day I talked about strip clubs. I have, there were other rumors. There've been so many rumors. If I say yes, they said I said no. If I said no, they say I'm saying yes. And again, these are targeted attacks and lies that are being spread to separate me from black people. Uh, it's a desperation move because they know at the end of the day, uh, this is a strong campaign and we're gonna win this race. It is totally false. No one ever interviewed me. No one ever asked me before they printed anything. I'm not sure who started it, but T.I. needs to stop it because he hasn't even asked me. Uh, and why he's promoting this is because he's supporting the other candidate. Felipe Shamar, thank you so much for joining me tonight. We will be uh, watching tomorrow's results. Uh, and if you are victorious, we'd love to have you back on the show as the mayor of Atlanta. Thank you so much.